Thank you so much for joining us on another exciting episode of The Trading Bell. This week on the show, we shall be speaking to Terry Adebetsa, who is the Chief Officer in Charge of Derivatives at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. But really, who is Terry? Let's take a quick look at his profile. Terence Adembessa is the Chief Officer of Derivatives Market at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Terry has over 15 years experience in investment banking and notable achievements in financial sector engagements that have had and continue to impact directly on the lives of ordinary East Africans. Terry was responsible for the development of the growth enterprise market segment GEMS, the NSC and the FTSC International Index Series, the Real Estate Investment Trust, Exchange Traded Funds and Derivatives Market, next at the NSC. In his current role, Terry provides leadership for the derivatives business and product development function of the NSC. Terry was responsible for the development of the growth enterprise market segment, the NSC and FTSE International Index Series, Real Estate Investment Trust, Exchange Traded Funds and the Derivatives Market, next at the NSC. In his current role, Terry provides leadership for the derivatives business and product development function of the NSC. He serves as a member of the Executive Management Committee and its subsidiary company, NSC Clear Limited, and as the Secretary of the NSC Board of Directors, Derivatives Oversight Committee. Terry is also a board member of the Association of Future Markets, representing Africa and the NSC. Yeah. Thank you so much, Terry, for making time for us. Thank you. Thank Such you. a pleasure Thank to host you on pleasure. the program. Pleasure, Ibi. You are the man that is spearheading this great initiative known as the Derivatives Trading. Many Kenyans are still grappling, trying to understand what are derivatives? How can I come on board? No mm. one seems to be breaking it down for the common man mm. at the end of the day who would like to invest in the exchange. Yeah. Perhaps, <laughs> Terry, kindly explain it to us like a five-year-old yeah. who is keen about this whole thing about derivatives trading. Yeah. So, so a derivative is a contract that uh, derives its being from an underlying security mm -hmm. right um, in this case the exchange has put out derivative contracts on the shares on equities uh, we have the equity index uh, contracts that you can trade and then you have the single stock uh, features contracts that you can trade and the single stock features contracts really are, uh, are pegged on some select stocks based on uh, liquid stocks that are trading on the on the exchange all right um by its nature it's a contract it's not it's, you know it's not a it's not a physical asset per se it's a contract that you trade um and it has some key features one is that um there are specifications around how much this contract reflects the underlying security uh, so in the case of securities that are trading below 100 shillings then the contract size is about a thousand so one contract one derivative contract repre represents um, about a thousand underlying shares that's a contract specification okay two when you trade a derivative contract you don't pay the full amount you trade based on what we call margin a fraction of the total uh, value notional value of the contract um, the third one is that uh, unlike, unlike your other securities, for example, equities or bonds for that matter, your profits or losses or your gains or whatever losses are actualized on a daily basis because trading happens on a daily basis. So it's possible that you can be able to um, you know, know what value you've created or lost on a daily basis and that amount is actually credited to you or debited from you uh, on a daily basis. All right. Terry, you've given a very detailed explanation and many Kenyans as we know this is an agricultural economy, technically this means we are a commodity driven uh, mm. country and of course how do you explain to our viewers with a commodity exchange kind of concept yeah. around derivatives trading? Okay. Um, first is to clarify, you know commodities can be traded spot oh, yeah. or they can be traded based on the futures. Mm -hmm. um, 
if you if you're trading if you you're going to trade spot it means we come to the market i give you my bag of maize you sure give me cash uh -huh. 3000 bob right yeah. assuming that's where the price the of market maize price is going. perhaps uh, but um, if you're going to trade on the um, derivative then you have to look back a bit and think about it this way um, when a farmer goes to the shamba right from the beginning planting season march april yeah you you know the farmer knows how much their input costs will be they know how much bag of CDs, how much a bag of fertilizer is, mm. how much their labor cost is. Sure. Uh, if they're hiring machinery, they will know what the price of the machinery is. Mm. The two things they don't know is how the weather will be. Sure. Uh, and the price of their produce mm -hmm. at the time of harvest. Uh, harvest. Yeah. Because of science nowadays, it's possible that they know the, the yield. They can approximate the yield. Correct. Get. Correct. So how do they cover themselves against the price risk right from before they even get to the shamba to plant? So it's possible that, you know, on the other end, you have your miller who knows that, um, are they, you know, in November, come harvest season, that I would like, they would like to purchase X number of bags sure. for, their, for their meal, right? Yeah. So they, you know, they, they know how much bags they require. Sure. The thing that they're not sure about is the price, mm. right? Mm -hmm. But to them also, they so 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 they are also subjected to some price risk. You know, the price could be like we've seen in previous years, way above what they are able to absorb in their operations. Correct. So right from that um, during the planting season, before even planting, it is possible that these two parties can actually go into an exchange buy a contract saying um you know farmer will say i will deliver x number of bags to you at x price and then below will say yes i'll buy those x bags from you at x price and they agree the price assuming they agree the price is 3500 okay you know if i go to the shamba and um because i've assured myself a price of 3000 um it's possible that i can either uh, make a gain for my crop season that mm -hmm. season or not okay so you know during the season we know the price of maize fluctuates it correct goes up and down up and down what, so what happens when we get to november or october during the harvest season and the spot price of maize is at 3500 you understand yeah in the beginning, the farmer and the miller had contracted at three thousand. At three thousand, okay. So who makes a loss during that period? It's the farmer. The farmer makes a loss. Why? Because they had fixed the price at three thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the market price during harvest is three thousand five hundred. But remember, the reverse can also <coughs> happen. Sure. You can get to November and the price of maize is two thousand five hundred. So who then takes a loss? Of course, it's the miller. The miller takes a loss because yeah. you had contracted at three thousand. The spot price during harvest is two thousand five hundred, but the miller, the farmer had contracted at three thousand. So these are, you know, they've cushioned themselves mm. for the price. Mm. So derivative contracts are really, by and large, um, used by various participants in markets to hedge their um, price risk um, or to even hedge their. Um, settlement commodity whatever if you want to call it that mm -hmm. during certain periods so if if you know the miller wants to be assured that they can get x number of bags at a certain price and the farmer wants to know that for if he if he produced x number of bags he'll get a certain price mm. uh, for those product for 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 that yield all right thank you terry for that yeah. it's very important for us to set the scene because <laughs> as you know very well this has been a very tough topic for many kenyans yeah but terry let's talk about now the launch of the next derivatives market yeah what does this mean for kenya now that we are seeing uh, kenya being one of the most robust mm. economies in east africa yeah. trying to play sort of catch up with south africa um the development of uh, derivatives markets in, in, in Kenya is really a big step towards the enhancing our financial markets and growing our capital markets. Um, remember for, ve for, for a while now that 
if you're invested in certain securities in the market and they take a downward turn, you're unable to um, exit, you're, you're really unable to hedge that price risk on those securities. For example, uh, if you buy a share and the price goes down, um, you take the loss, right? Yeah. You're unable to hedge that loss. And yeah. so your, your portfolio declines until there is a, a correction in the price you know, in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. But as markets develop, then you see that you know, it's important that you get to a place where you know, um, investors have the ability to hedge their positions based on price. Um, one, they are able to, if possible, even speculate. Um, you know, some people think speculation is a bad thing in markets. It's, it's, it's a good thing. It drives vo uh, liquidity, drives volatility. Um, you, you know, we are able then to deepen the markets because there's an additional investment uh, security that yeah. people can participate. Yeah. A good example is this. If, if you want to buy, say, um, the NSC share, which is, I think, trading at about 11 shillings now, if you want to buy um, a thousand shares of the NSC and it's trading at 11, uh, you'll have to pay 11,000 shillings, right? Sure. Um, there, there are participants in the market who would not want to put out the full outlay of 11,000 to buy the full shares. They would want to trade, say, uh, on margin. So they could place maybe 1,100, 10% of that value to get exposure to the NSC share using a derivative contract, okay? And the classic example of that would be, you know, if you want to trade the entire um, NSC and you don't have money to buy the, all the individual counters, then you trade the index features contract mm -hmm. because that contract gives you exposure to all the securities that are listed. For example, now we have the NSC 25 contract. Yeah. If you buy an index contract uh, on the derivative market, it gives you exposure to all those 25 securities. Um, you know, that's fundamentally different than going in and buying each and of 25 shares that make up the index. Uh, it's a bit, it might be a bit more, a bit expensive yeah. for especially retail clients. But you know, that, that when you buy the index, then you get exposure into, 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 into that entire pool of, of securities. And Terry, you've brought up a very important point because my next question really is how do investors seize the opportunities now that we have this uh, product in the market? So, very simple, you, you know, the NSE has published the list of st stockbrokers and investment banks. You, yeah. you walk to your stockbroker or investment bank, they'll ask you to fill, uh, to sign a, a, a form. Uh, you know, this is a KYC account opening form, they'll ask you to sign that. Um, if you don't have a previous account with them, they might ask you for documentation, you know, your ID and that kind of thing. All right. uh, and then you place, they, you, you place money. So they'll give you on a bank account, you deposit money, um, and is you're able... Minimum? Is there a maximum? There's no minimum. Um, you know, the, the, the cheapest contract you can buy right now is, is about 2,900 shillings. So that means um, over and above, you know, the amount required to buy the... Um, the, that contract, you might need maybe an additional 1,000, 2,000 shillings. Because remember, we said this is, this is a market where your profits and losses are actualized on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So as you trade, your broker should be in a position to fund, to just pull, you know, credit money from your client account. Yeah. And in case you're the lost position, yeah. take that and then pay back. Pay back. Or when you make money, then they take that and credit your account. Right. So there's always a, you know, like your they cash exactly happening in your account. Sure. So the additional buffer is just to ensure that your broker is managing the ability to be able to raise cash from you as and when the contracts are traded on a daily basis.
Terry, I'm sure you already have uh, contracts yourself, if not yeah, friends yeah. that you know. Yeah. And uh, many are asking, can, can people make decent returns on this investment? Of course, yeah. You think about it. If you, if you um, remember, remember these are leveraged products. You yeah. trade based on a margin requirement yeah. and it gives you much higher exposure, right? Um, we said if you want to trade the NSC share, um, if, if there's a derivative contract on the NSC share, there's none for now. Uh, but if, if there is, for 1,000 shares, you'd have to pay 11,000. But for one contract, you'd only pay about maybe 1,100. Mm -hmm. Okay? It, the, when you pay 1,100, it gives you exposure to 11,000. Yeah. Right? Now, and this is the thing about leveraged uh, products. products yeah. If the price moves by a shilling, assuming you are long, or you, you know, you, you are positive on that contract, yeah. if the price moves by a, by a shilling, you make 1,000 shillings. Yeah? Mm. Clean. If it goes down, you lose a thousand, right? Yeah. So you see, leverage products are able to give you the ability to make, uh, f you know, a large gain or, yeah. or and vice versa, also a large loss. So it's important also clients understand, you know, what what kind of um, movements prices are. Uh, they be properly understand the product, understand how markets, uh, they can view the prices, how they are going. They are talking with their investment bank and stockbroker to advise on, on, on uh, research around counters and research around how market is doing. They're getting regular updates so that their investment bank or broker is then telling them when to, when to go long, which, is, which means to buy, yeah. or when to go short, which means to, uh, to sell. All right. And yeah. uh, Terry, now that uh, this product is in the market, and uh, if you look back and uh, make your assessment, and uh, you have to plot a graph. Yeah. Would you say you've had a sort of a hockey stick kind of uptake, or it's more of a general incremental kind of uptake? It's a it's an incremental uptake because remember this is a new product. A lot of people are still trying to understand it. Um, we are still getting you know the onboarding process for clients. Um, you know you have to sign because it's a new market. The regulator requires that you sign up and a new form, you know, you're, 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 you're opening an account, though it's linked to your previous account if you already yeah, had an account, yeah. yeah. So they're, they're sort of linked, but you have to sign new, uh, you know, account opening uh, okay. uh, forms. Um, then also your stockbroker is, you know, uh, has to uh, walk you through what is required, they have to convince, have to be, you know, be confident that you understand the product, you understand the risks in, involved, and then now you can participate. So we see, um, we, we see, you know, the growth gradually, you know, growing. Uh, okay. Of course, it's a new market, it, it starts slowly, um, but as people become more and more comfortable, then it takes off. Um, and we've seen this even in, in global economies, um, different countries where this you know there's phenomenal growth you'd be surprised for example in africa um, south africa is one of the largest traded destinations for derivative contracts you know on a global scale mm -hmm. uh, you'd be surprised in places like india um, housewives and students are the most are some of the most active participants uh, in these markets so these markets are open for everyone all right. And uh, if you to look at the numbers, how would you reach how, where Kenya is in terms of uptake? No, no. Um, we're still a new market. Remember, we've only traded for one month. Uh, so it's still very nascent days. Um, <coughs> it will take a bit of time for us then to look and say, okay, where do we um, scale in terms of um, other uh, global markets? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, in terms of uh, comparatively, and uh, when you look at what is in the horizon, um, what's your general sentiment? No, we have, we have, we have very good sentiment, uh, very good feel from market participants. Um, what is interesting is the interest coming from retail clients. Um, we initially thought that this would be an institutional product, uh, but there's, you know, there's very good... 
uh, interest uh, from retail clients. They're asking, okay, what is this product? How do we participate? Uh, they seem to understand. You know, some of them seem to understand. Remember, there's a whole growing uh, pool of, um, uh, you, you know, investors who nowadays are spending like their whole day trading Forex and global securities and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh, so you're seeing a, quite a bit of interest with that target pool of investors. Um, it's a good thing. It's a good thing that we have done this. Remember, this is a second market in Africa after South Africa. Um, given our scale of our economy, so it should take it should take time for 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 you know for us to scale to levels where then we are saying we are we are, you know you, are comp you can compare us with other global markets. Sure. Remember, the capital markets in the region are not as fully developed as as the Kenyan markets, but they are growing. Uh, they are growing. We are seeing, you know. Um, investors from those regions becoming savvy and we're seeing them being very active in the Kenyan markets. So for example, the, sec the social security fund in, um, in Uganda is a very big investor in the Kenyan markets, right? I think close to 30%, 20-30% of their assets are invested in Kenya. Mm -hmm. You're seeing the same even with the social security fund in, in Rwanda. Remember, these other markets hadn't yet established their collective investment schemes or the regulations around pooled investment funds before, uh, and so we are seeing that growing. Yesterday, I had a meeting with with the biggest fund manager from Ghana. You know, um, close to 15, 20 percent of the assets are invested in Kenya. Uh, so we are seeing you know, uh, a lot of interest from the region in the Kenyan markets. It could, it could be a confidence factor in terms of, you know, we have much more established, um, we have much more established um, corporates, a much more established capital markets. Uh, these, they feel they have, you know, there's some sort of sense of security in the assets uh, traded here. So the opportunities are there for all those investors. All right. Yeah. And Terence, as we wrap up, of course, uh, one of the big conversations right now is the stability of the capital markets. Mm. We've seen uh, the currency really uh, taking a very interesting turn. Yeah. Where two weeks ago it was crossing 104. Yeah. And uh, of course, the NSE 20 has also been uh, battered for yeah. the last few months. Yeah. From where we sit right now, are we in a good position? Are we likely to experience another round of volatility? Um, I think it's I think it's a fact of what's happening on the global space. Um, if if you're following the global markets, you'll see, sure. you know, the the in the American markets, for example, you know, there's all this uh, Trump effect. Yeah. There's a noise about China, China and the U.S. Um, the yield curve in the U.S. is inverted, which is, you know, uh, throwing all this. Uh, warning signals, you know, like your two-year paper and your ten-year paper are around the same yield, so it's it's creating a concern with with investors. Mm -hmm. And remember, 70% um, of market participation in Kenya is foreign, right? Yeah. So, even the, if if the foreign clients are having, you know, um, jittery sentiments around their home markets, mm -hmm. it would apply that then wherever they invested outside here, um, for example, in Kenya, they would be jittery as well. Um, so we, you know, we, we have to take a um, cautious view of uh, and be cognizant, you know, of what is happening in the U.S. markets, and that has a direct impact onto the Kenyan markets. All right. Yeah. Terry Ademensa, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Shooting from the hip. <laughs> not mincing any of his words. Yeah. Well, of course, a lot of optimism around the derivatives market in Kenya, as you've heard it from the man who's steering this ship here at the NSC. And of course, uh, we shall definitely be keeping an eye just to see how the market picks up and whether or not we shall be able to see an upward trajectory around derivatives trading. Well, that's where we wrap it up for this week's episode of The Trading Bell. My name is Abi Aguina. And of course, let's make a date next week, same time on KTN News. <laughs>